Peaches Records and Tapes was a national retail chain of record superstores that opened in 1975. Thank you for your suggestion. Superstar Diana Ross, lean into it, the latest from Mr. Big. The soundtrack from For the Boys by Bette Midler. Music for the people from Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Great new music from Shanice, Inner Child, Amy Grant, Smash Hit, Heart in Motion. Force Behind the Power. New from superstar Diana Ross. Lean into it. The latest from Mr. Big. Peaches. A lot of music. A lot of store. Peaches. 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 It has been widely disputed as to the year it opened, whether it was in 1974 or 1975. There's no dispute that Los Angeles street-level record hustler Tom Hyman opened his first Peaches Records and Tapes on Hollywood Boulevard in Los Angeles, California. Stores would be known for their wood-paneled walls and faux red brick flooring that stretch for days. Wooden fruit crates, overflowing with vinyl records, bore the colorful signature of the Peach logo. Six-foot-tall album cover replicas lined the facade, spotlighted for all to admire. They had the merchandise bearing the familiar logo with staples of a beloved music sanctuary. The whole motif of the store was kind of based on a Peach's crate which was a wooden crate that you would keep records in, explained one customer, describing the interior as very California, very earthy, whatever that means. The music store chain was legendary for its exhaustive back catalog. Music lovers made pilgrimage from all over to acquire albums that had long escaped their grasp. They had an enormous selection of imported discs classical, jazz, anything you could want that you had never been able to get would be located here. Average stores would vary with some being 15 to 20,000 square feet and some stores had as many as 40 employees. Tapes in the Peaches logo refer to the 8 tracks, the cassette's bloated, wound a bit too tight older cousin, arguably the clumsiest musical delivery device of all time. Sure, it made albums portable for the first time. You couldn't very well bolt a turntable to your car's dashboard. But 8-tracks were prone to breakage and warping, not to mention the tape itself unspooling and then wrapping tightly around the player's heads. The chain was also known for their iconic crates. Wood slatted fruit crates, like those used by farmers, were perfectly proportioned for storing LPs. For $2.98, you could purchase Peaches crates emblazoned with a logo rendered by John Alford. Stores were also known for autograph signing events, live in-store concerts, and huge reproductions of the album covers on the latest titles on the side of the buildings. Emulating the tradition of Grauman's Chinese Theater, some stores invited visiting artists to set their handprints in cement on the sidewalk outside. Legendary artists that left their mark included the Allman Brothers, ZZ Top, Dolly Parton, the Beach Boys, Willie Nelson, the Kinks, 38 Special, Hank Williams Jr., and Johnny Van Zant of Leonard Skinner. Another interesting tidbit, the iconic Peaches logo was inspired by the California mountains and fruit groves and was fused with a Georgia-style peach crate on to hold your personal vinyl collection. The second Peaches Records and Tape store opened in Atlanta, Georgia, although some claim that Atlanta was the first store to open in 1975. With a huge success upon opening and with the support from their loyal fan base, they eventually opened around 50 stores in 22 cities with over 2,000 employees, peaking in the late 1970s. Peaches was the place to be with their vast inventory, knowledgeable staff, and constant music promotions. 
Scott Hyman and his partner Bob Rothstein's store chain were bringing in over $100 million a fiscal year during its prime. However, the retailer had adopted an untenable business model. They would order 500 copies of an album where I would have only ordered five and still be worried about how many I'd have to return a former employee explained. We had mountains of inventory that had to be sent back to the manufacturers because we po couldn't possibly sell it. it. Got to be ridiculously expensive. Peaches Records and Tapes filed for bankruptcy on June 1, 1981. Mr. Heyman acknowledged that in a rush to expand, proper financial controls were ignored. His high rent and energy costs required to maintain a constantly rising volume to stay profitable. William dipped and the company refused to underwrite his large inventory as present interest rates. It became time for Chapter 11. Peaches cited $20 million in debt for its 35 stores coast to coast, owed to Citibank and six different record distributors. Heyman was forced to sell, which he attributed to competition expansion, an oversaturated market, and the gas crunch. The store chain was purchased on March 31, 1982 by the acquisition company Peaches Entertainment Corporation. Peaches Records and Tapes, under new management in 1982, and now based out of Florida, would continue, but the chain would slowly close stores throughout the country. Attempting to adapt to changing tastes and technology, Peach's records and video limped into the 21st century when a mob-style bust out got underway, closing stores and liquidating inventory for quick cash to prop up the few profit centers left. In January of 2001, there were 10 franchisees still left. By the end of that year, every outlet had been shuttered except for one. The lone remaining location is in New Orleans, or Nolens if you are a local there, one of the eight before bankruptcy. That location moved to a former Woolworth store and continues to maintain the lunch counter there. So what happened to those iconic cement imprints? Many were destroyed in 1981 when the stores closed following the company's bankruptcy. Others, such as the one in Tulsa and Florida, still can be seen outside the original locations that have since been rebranded. So what are some of your favorite memories of this place? Leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video below. Be sure to hit that like button. Thanks for watching.